Hey everybody, it's Ripley back again. We're going to talk about a little population growth, and then we're going to be done with differential equations. So we already talked about the fact that dp over dt equals kp, which says the rate of change of population as a function of time is proportional to the amount of population present at that time. And we know that when we solve that using several differential equations, <clears throat> that we ended up with p of t equals p naught e to the kt. But earlier, if you recall, I gave you, I, I, I made a mighty bold claim. I said that there was another model for growth, and this is this guy, okay? This is called the logistics diff eq, logistics diff eq. And we knew its shape. <clears throat> we not only know its shape, but we know the equation for it. So the shape of this curve is, oh, good Lord, that's just awful. Let me try that again. Sorry, folks. This isn't a very long video, so you can sit here and watch me erase this line. Oof, uh, terrible. All right, slow down, Ripley. Boom. We know that the shape of this curve is, well, we know that when P is 0, the change is 0, and we know that P is M, or the carrying capacity. Remember, this was referred to as the carrying, carrying capacity this is the relative growth rate right here. So we know, let's say for a second, whoa, wow, it's really hard to draw today. This is M. Then we know that my curves look like that, depending, <clears throat> depending on where we start. So they can look like that, look like that, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Um, but I'm going to prove, before the end of the day, I'm going to prove that the solution to this differential equation is actually P of T equals m over 1 plus a e to the negative kt. Um, yeah, it's not going to take very long, I promise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, let's see, where am I? I'm going to do dp over dt is equal to kp times 1 minus p over m. Now, I'm, I'm going to do something here, and I'm going to violate one of my rules, but don't violate your, my rules if you don't have to. I'm just going to make my life a little bit simpler. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into kp times m minus p over m. So all I did was find a common denominator here. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I know down the road when I, when I separate my variables, again, you're going to be like, Ripley, what are you doing? When I set my, separate my variables, it's far easier to try and, and solve the integral. I'll show you why in just a sec. So I'm going to separate my variables. I'm going to get dp over p times m minus p, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. But I could write this over m, but I'm going to put the m up here. Because right? when you divide by a fraction, you flip it and you multiply. And this is equal to k dt. And when I take the integral, this is kind of getting confusing here. When I take the integral, I know the right-hand side turns into kt plus c, as it always does. Now, the left-hand side, think about this for just a sec. I can actually rewrite this using um, um, partial fractions. I can rewrite this as 1 over p plus 1 over m minus p, which I can show you really quickly. This is dp. You, you, I could do this by hand, but I don't, I don't want to waste your time. Some of you have not seen partial fraction decomposition. Uh, most of you have seen it in your pre-calculus course. So, excuse me, that, that's how she works. <clears throat> if I were to find the common denominator, it would be p times m minus p. So I'd have m minus p plus p, the p's cancel, over p times m minus p, and I get there. Right? We've already taken that integral, so we're good there. So this is equal to the natural log of p, the absolute value of p, plus, because the integral of the sum is the sum of the integral, natural log of the absolute value of m minus p. Now let's be careful here. Remember, the independent variable, I probably could have factored out a negative and put, put it there, but this is linear, so instead of a plus, I would get a minus here, which is useful. Minus, and this is equal to... Um, kt plus c. Now I've got my eye on the, on the prize. Remember, <clears throat> excuse me, I want this guy right here. Remember, when everything's said and done, this is going to turn into this. I'm kind of liking this kt plus c, except I want it to be a negative kt plus c because as t grows, if, if k is positive, 
because we think of that as the positive relative growth rate because we're growing and T is growing positive. Remember, when everything's said and done, I need this term to go away. As T grows, we head for our carrying capacity. So this AE to the negative KT needs to turn into zero, which means this K times T needs to be positive, and this negative will gobble it up. Now, that's sort of, what's the word? It's pedantic, I realize. But at the same time, it's an easy way to make sure that you're doing these things correctly. If I didn't have the negative here, truthfully, and I won't, I won't tell anybody, if I didn't have the negative here and it were positive, then K would just end up being negative. But I'm sort of forcing the issue, forcing K to be positive, having that negative there. I know that's probably way more information than you needed, but that's okay. So this is going to turn in. What I want is that negative K. So I'm going to multiply everything through by a negative, and I get the natural log of the absolute M minus p minus the natural log of the absolute value of p, and this equals negative kt plus c prime. Now, your spidey sense is probably already tingling because we've got natural logs here. So this becomes the natural log of m minus p over p is equal to negative kt plus c prime. So this implies that m minus p over p is equal to negative, whoops, e to the negative kt plus c. Remember, I don't have to deal with the absolute values because that those get gobbled up in the constant. This guy right here becomes a e to the negative kt. Now, the only job that I have left to do is to make this look like this. I'm going to leave this out here for just a sec. I'm going to change colors so we don't get we don't get muddled down. I'll draw a little thing being here. So this implies m minus p is equal to p a e to the negative kt. A little bit of algebra never hurt anybody, right? Um, I'll add p to the other side. So m equals p a e to the negative kt plus p. Then factor out the p, and now I have this p of t times a e to the negative kt plus 1 is equal to m. And in a puff of algebra, I get m over 1 plus a e to the negative kt. I'm done. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, if I want to solve, <coughs> if I want to solve for a, this is the coolest part, because I've done all the heavy lifting for you. If I want to solve for a, all I have to do is, what do I need to be able to solve for a? Well, I need t to be 0 because I need this term to turn into a 1, right? So I know if t equals 0, let me, let's not get too crazy here. If I know that if I let t equal 0, I will get p naught, my initial population. Remember, if you subscript it, it's the same thing as writing p of 0, is equal to m over 1 plus a. In a puff of algebra, a, I would multiply across, and then I would divide through, I would get a is equal to m minus p naught over p naught. And I'm done. That's all there is to it. Now, I will tell you that in my class, I will never make you go through this process. Never, ever, ever, never. Okay, I just did it for you so you basically you do not have to take any, you don't have to separate any variables for logistics regression or a logistics differential equation. What is important, and it's the most important thing about this, out of this section for me, is that you recognize this differential equation, that this differential equation turns into this solution. <clears throat> okay, very much like you recognize that this differential equation turns into that solution. Okay, that way you don't have to go through all this garbage and you can just write it out. I probably shouldn't call mathematics garbage. garbage. It's elegant and beautiful. Okay, all right, that's it. We're done. There's nothing that you need to do. I will tell you right now that in my class, even if it tells you to separate and solve, you don't have to do it. You get this for nothing because I just did the heavy lifting for you. So as always, when you speak of Ripley, please speak highly. Have a really good day, and uh, we'll talk to you in the next one.